lot of you out there have asked me my thoughts on the new Logan trailer. Logan, what did you do? Charles, the world is not the same as it was. I mean, it looks great. It looks amazing. Like Hugh Jackman is just, wow. I mean, he looks incredible and I like the old man Logan thing that he's doing. I'm really excited for the angle of him like mentoring a young girl, protecting and mentoring a young girl. This is a big part of Wolverine's uh, storylines, a part of his, you know, loops that he's in, in the comic books. He, he mentors and protégés young girls, you know, a lot. And so, but that's something that most people don't ever talk about. A lot of people in movies have never acknowledged that. So I'm excited for that. Uh, it, it could be great. I think that it's probably going to be Hugh Jackman's best Wolverine movie, but then the other, that's not saying much because the other two weren't very good. You get a good song that everybody loves and you cut a whole trailer to it and everyone's like, oh my God, your movie. But really it's just the song. You know, I don't know if the movie's gonna be good because the trailer was great. I mean, it was a really great trailer, but I've never seen Fox put out any Wolverine movie that I liked. I haven't seen an X-Men movie that I really liked. First Class is the closest thing, but it's still not my dream. So for any of you who don't know anything about who I am, uh, X-Men are my passion, they're like my babies. I love them. I've done three documentary, three hour long documentaries on them. Epic History, X-Men Volume 1, 2, and 3, check them out. They're all for free on YouTube right now. I think it'll definitely be the best Wolverine movie that there ever has been. So in this movie, they are kind of, sort of, maybe, but not really adapting a graphic novel called Old Man Logan, which was, you know, a standalone situation uh, where he is old. It's like Logan just ages really slowly. So this takes place like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years in the future. And there's a bunch of like redneck inbred hulks called green necks and like just weird stuff. It's like very apocalyptic. So I'm pretty sure we're not gonna see any of that sort of weird shit in this. So yeah, Logan, the trailer looked amazing. It's a fucking rad trailer movie. I don't know, we'll see. Probably be the best one though. It has the potential to be the best one, but that isn't saying much. So I wait in. What will I do if Logan is great? I will be really happy. And I'll be really happy for Hugh Jackman. And it'll be a great way for him to go out and it'll be just a great ending. And I hope that it's a period and it's a great send off. And then we'll get a new Wolverine, like it's a new James Bond and he's got some really big shoes to fill. I hope he's a lot shorter and hairier and uglier this time. That's all I want. I, yeah, I want a Logan more like the comic book Logan. I want a short, ugly, hairy, crazy little man. <laughs> Top story tonight. We've got Dune news. There's been a Dune alert all over the internet. Everyone was tweeting me that Legendary, a company here in California in Los Angeles, has bought the rights, the film and television rights, to Frank Herbert's science fiction series, Dune, the best-selling science fiction novel of all time, and my personal favorite. <laughs> what do I think about this news? Well, I don't, I mean, there's not enough information to really know anything yet. All we know is that Legendary has bought the rights. There's no directors, there's, there's some producers attached, but there's not like, you know, there's not a lot of people attached. They haven't announced whether it's gonna be a movie or a television series or both. You know, they haven't, we don't know anything right now. So I, there's nothing to really yell about. So let's do a little bit of Kwisatz Hatteracking, all right? We're gonna look at all possible future timelines, okay? Best possible future timeline. We have Legendary making me the Dune of my dreams, you know, like just making me just a smart, and I, I want a show. I, I don't want a movie. I wouldn't mind having like a movie like after the show and you have in between movies between seasons or something maybe, I don't know, you know. Uh, it's a whole new world, but I would like to see a longer HBO kind of like Game of Thrones, like lots of money, show, lots of intrigue, crazy stuff, okay? Worst possible future, something that I see that is, is, could be alarming, is that, so Legendary has bought Dune. Now Legendary in particular is the largest independent movie studio in LA. This year it was bought for $3.5 million by a Chinese conglomerate. And so uh, we have this Chinese conglomerate who really owns this, so really they bought the rights to Dune. And that company is Dalian Wanda. All right, they also purchased AMC before they purchased Legendary. So what concerns me is that we have potentially the Chinese central government meddling, like filtering Frank Herbert's Dune art. And you know, that's troubling. 
on a lot of levels because it's like the whole thing about Dune is that it's like anti-government. Like it's really anti-government. It's really like anti-messiahs. It's like, I mean, it's all about social engineering. Like, so I don't, I don't know how a company with Chinese interests of like normalizing communism is going to you know, inject those themes in that their own themes into this art. The whole problem is, is that we have this Chinese company who's going to be like filtering art for worldwide audiences through like a communist filter, you know, and it's like communism is not super awesome on art. I don't know if you've heard, but they weren't really big on artists and freedoms and stuff. So. <laughs> So I'm afraid that the amazing truths that I have found in Dune that have opened my eyes, that have like blown my mind, like I'm afraid that these truths that I want to get out into the world are not, are gonna be repressed and it's gonna be bastardized into something that, you know, is like not the truth.